<sighs> okay, let's do this. Layers. The boogeyman of all MTG judges. Considered to be one of the most difficult rulings in Magic's history to understand. But in today's video, we're going to be breaking down layers and showing that they're not that hard to learn once you know how to apply them. Let's jump into it. So what exactly are layers and why should you care? Effectively, layers are the order in which continuous effects apply themselves to a game state, whether that's static abilities like Honor of the Pure, or until end of turn effects like Act of Treason or Giant Growth. This is similar to how we have BapNap to know which order to resolve multiple triggered abilities that occur at the same time. And depending on the order layers are applied can cause some pretty interesting interactions. Before we go over layers, let's start with an example to think about. What happens to my non-basic lands when there is a Magus of the Moon in play, which says non-basic lands are mountains, and the enchantment Humility, which says all creatures lose all abilities and have base power and toughness 1-1. On the surface, this looks pretty simple and no doubt someone in the comments will say, well, reading the card explains the card. But I can assure you it's not as simple as it looks. And I'll tell you right now, this interaction ends with all non-basic lands still being mountains. Confused? Let's break down the layers. In Magic, there are seven layers. In layer one, we have copy effects like clone or mirror weave. In layer two, there's control changing effects like agent of treachery or control magic. In layer three, we have text changing effects like sleight of mind or something like the overload mechanic. Layer four covers type changing effects like blood moon or arcane adaptation. In layer 5, we have color changing effects like Painter's Servant. In layer 6, we have effects that add or remove abilities like Humility or Acroma's Memorial. And in the final layer, layer 7, we have power and or toughness changing effects. Now there are a few different kinds and they're applied in the following order. In layer 7a, we have characteristic defining abilities like those on Tarmogoyf or Lord of Extinction. Basically, any ability that determines the value of a star on that creature's power or toughness. In layer 7b, we have effects that set base power and toughness, like In Soul Artifact or Witness Protection. In layer 7c, we have effects and counters that modify power or toughness, like Giant Growth, Dead Weight, or plus one plus one, or negative one, negative one counters. And finally, in layer 7D, we have effects that switch power and toughness, like Inside Out or Twisted Image. Now that we know what the layers are, how do we apply layers to permanence? Well, firstly, you start with the original card and its base oracle text. You then find all the continuous effects that would be applied to the card and then proceed to apply them in order from top to bottom of the layers list. The key thing to note here is as you're going down the list, once you apply a layer, it effectively gets locked in and any subsequent layers won't affect them. Now, there are some cards like Turn to Frog or Colossus Hammer that affect multiple layers, so it's important to keep those in mind too. So let's go back to our Magus of the Moon humility example. Let's work out what layers are being interacted with. On Magus of the Moon, it says non-basic lands are mountains. So we're changing the non-basic land type to mountain. So type changing effects, that's layer four. On humility, it says all creatures lose all abilities. Adding and removing abilities, that's layer six. And it also says and have base power and toughness 1-1. One, one. Power and toughness changing effects that specifically set the base power. That's layer 7B. Okay, so now we've got all of our layers worked out. We apply them to the game state in order from top to bottom. First, we head to layer four and change all non-basic lands to mountains and lock that in. We then head to layer six and remove all abilities from creatures. But here's the catch. 
because Magus of the Moon's effect has already been applied, removing its ability now doesn't change the game state. Non-basic lands will still be mountains. We then go to layer 7b and set all creatures' power and toughness to 1-1. One, one. This leaves us with a board state of all non-basic lands being mountains, all creatures having no abilities, and their base power and toughness set to 1. So we now know how to apply layers, but there are two more things we need to learn about before we become the master of layers. Dependencies and timestamps. We need to be aware of timestamps and dependencies for when we have two effects trying to apply from the same layer. Which order would we apply them in? Let's look at this example. Let's say we have levitation in play. Creatures you control have flying. And then our opponent plays Mystic Decree. What would happen here? Would our creatures have flying or not? Both cards affect layer 6. Well, this is where we look at timestamps. We apply effects from the same layer in timestamp order. Timestamps effectively get put on something whenever an object enters a zone or a continuous effect is generated by a spell or ability. An aura, equipment, or fortification receives a new timestamp each time it becomes attached to a player or an object, and when a transforming permanent transforms or converts. Let's take a look at this classic example. You may have heard about this one before. What happens when we have humility and opal essence in play? To clarify, humility makes all our creatures one ones with no abilities, and Opal Essence makes each other enchantment a creature with power and toughness equal to its mana value. So what would be the power and toughness of our humility? Is it a 1-1 one, one, or is it a 4-4? Four, four? Well, that depends on the timestamps. If humility was in play first and then Opal Essence was played, we would apply humility's effect first, setting everything to be a 1-1, one, one, and then we would apply Opal Essence effect setting all enchantments, base power and toughness to be equal to their mana value. If Opal Essence was in play before Humility, we would apply Opal Essence power setting ability first, then Humility's making everything a 1-1. One, one. Okay, last and final step, dependencies. Most of the time when we have effects occurring in the same layer, we apply them in timestamp order but sometimes some effects outcomes are dependent on the application of other effects. Effectively, if you have two effects operating on the same layer and effect A would change how effect B works, you could say effect B is dependent on effect A. If a dependency exists, you always apply the dependent effect first. Here's another classic example. What would happen when we have Blood Moon and Urborg in play? In this case, because Urborg is a non-basic land, its ability that changes everything into a swamp solely depends on whether Blood Moon's mountain ability is applied first. That signals a dependency. So in this case, Blood Moon would be applied first, which would remove Urborg's ability, leaving all non-basic lands purely mountains, and lands would not become swamps in addition to their other types. So to summarize, when multiple continuous effects happen, we apply them from top to bottom of the layers list, locking them in as we go. And to work out the order of effects happening on the same layer, we apply them in timestamp order, or we apply the effects that other effects may depend on first. And there you have it. You are now a Layers Master. Be sure to leave a like if you learned something, and I hope this all made sense. If you're still confused, pop a question in the comment section down below, and I'll do my best to answer it. Are there any other rules interactions you would like explained? Let me know, and I may do a video on it. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.